Today on Animal Airport, Sharon and Deborah are called to detain a dog which may be carrying rabies and they're braced for trouble. A suburban garden is temporary home to an unlikely guest. Oh, look. Ruby the calf is flourishing, but is she legal? They may be well bred, but two rams give the staff the runaround. <laughs> and after two years, it's time for the resident lemurs to find a new home, but they don't want to leave. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. But as well as the 65 million human passengers, each year around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Center, affectionately known as the Ark. Animal Health Officer Chris is on the tarmac. He's on his way to Terminal 3 to pick up a dog from Dubai that's giving the ground crew cause for concern. Ain't got any water or anything. His little bowl it seems a bit sort of empty or dry. I don't know if he wants a quick drink or anything. We'll do that when we get back. Yeah, if okay. we could get him off, mate. Thank you. Uh, you can manage with this down here, with this stuff in the way. What is it? Just two... Uh, it's, a, it's a white dog in a box about okay. so big. OK, yeah, no problem. It's been an eight-hour flight from the Middle East. And like the human passengers, the air conditioning has left little Lulu parched. Okay. He was saying that the water port was dry, um, which means it's either been tipped out during transit or they didn't put any in. But unfortunately, because of BAA's laws, we're not allowed to bring any liquids through the control post, so we're not even allowed to bring water through. So, unfortunately, he's just going to have to wait until we get back to um, get back to the ark. I'm just going over the runway again, by the way. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> Animal health inspectors Deborah and Sharon are heading into central London. They're going to see the owner of a dog that's been illegally imported into the country. She doesn't know we're on our way. Once we discover that there's an, an illegal import, right we have to secure it ASAP because of the disease risk. The dog's flown in on a private jet from Luxembourg, landing not at Heathrow, but at Oxford. It's been vaccinated against rabies, but it shouldn't have travelled to the UK for at least two months. And I'm not expecting this to be easy. When we tell her that we're going to detain the dog and arrange it for to go to quarantine, I am suspecting that she's not going to be happy about this. So this isn't going to be an easy day. When we're on our way to something like this, I'm always thinking how volatile the people are going to be. So we're worried about officer safety, um, obviously, because not only is it emotional, um, one stage on from that, people quite often become violent, usually only verbally abusive, but um, you can never be certain. Um, if we feel that the situation is escalating to that sort of level, then we would call the police. It's always different, isn't it? It's never one the same. Deborah and Sharon have reached the address, but the cameras are denied entry. At the Ark, it's feeding and watering time for the residents. Animals which have been detained because they've been poorly packed often stay at the Ark until a new home can be found. Among them, six ring-tailed lemurs. The parents were taken by the police from their owner, who didn't have a license to keep them. Animal health officer Claude is on kitchen duty. A variety of fruit and veg, so they have a balanced diet. Um, at the moment, they're on a strict diet. I mean, on a Saturday, they'll get brown bread. On a Monday, they get eggs. 
it's just kind of really to make sure they have a balanced diet of different things and then a vitamin D on a Monday and a Friday so they make sure they get all that vitamins and stuff. And their special diet has seen them thrive. Since they've been here, the adult female has become pregnant, twice. Now there's a whole troop and it's hard to tell who's who. OK, so, um, little one just on the um, kind of stand down there, that's Daddy Lima. Um, he's quite easy to tell the difference between because you can see he's only got like, quite a short tail. Um, right, this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. I think this could be Mummy. No, I think that mummy doesn't normally come to the bars that often unless you've got food. So this is the oldest daughter, so this is daughter number one. I think this is the second, the second daughter. That looks like one of the young, the young ones. And then I think this is the next one. Um, no, I think that, I thought it'd be quite easy, but when they're all running around being silly, you can't really tell the difference that well. It's not quite Madagascar, but this kennel's been their home for more than two years, and there are rumours a new home may soon be found. As well as the daily routine, there's something out of the ordinary today. Stuart's just collected a rare spider monkey called Delilah off a flight from Denmark. One chatty spider monkey. She's moving from a Danish wildlife park to Dudley Zoo in the Midlands. <laughs> Brown-headed spider monkeys are one of the most endangered animals in Ecuador, where deforestation has devastated their numbers. But it's hoped Delilah will breed successfully in captivity. You can have a look out as well. Animal health officer Chris has seen Delilah has no water left in her cage. He's no idea if she drank it or if it spilled in transit. So we're just going to give him a few grapes just for a bit of rehydration. Um, and then we'll see how that goes. He puts on a mask to prevent the transmission of disease. To avoid stress, she stays in her cage. This is clearly better than in-flight catering. She'll serve her six months quarantine at Dudley Zoo, her new home. In central London, Sharon and Deborah have tried to take custody of the illegal dog, but the situation has deteriorated. The owners become distraught, and after an emotional exchange, they've had to call in the police. Oh, I'm so red, Debs. I've never... I'm not sure if there's a cafe or whether a... Because you haven't eaten. Oh, look at the colour of me. Oh, it looks like hot as well. OK, that's one of the hardest ones, all right, then? <laughs> yeah, it's right out there. The detained King Charles Spaniel is brought back to the Ark. This illegal immigrant is checked into a kennel where he must be kept in quarantine. Despite his vaccination, there's a chance he could be carrying rabies. This good puppy. Still shaken from her previous encounter, Sharon is unprepared for the owner's arrival at the Ark. She's here. She's just turned up. Tara's let her in. Tara didn't know. She's rushed to Heathrow in pursuit of her dog. Right. So we're just putting her into a kennel, OK? We didn't expect you to be here so quick. The owner wants to talk to Sharon in private. She has two options put the dog in quarantine or fly it back to Luxembourg. With money, no object, she decides to fly it back on a private jet. Okay. For Sharon, these confrontations are the worst part of the job. She's obviously very upset, you know, it's your dog, you, know, you love your dogs like you love your kids, most some people. And some people, your dogs are your kids. Um, 
but at the end of the day, the law, this is, you know, it's, it's legislated for, and we, we don't have a choice in the matter. If, if the dog isn't here that meets the UK requirements, we have to detain it. And there are some days that start very well. Some days you just wish you'd stayed in bed. A difficult day draws to a close and the Ark's overnight guests and residents settle down for the night. Kaylee and Tara are seeing to some late arrivals, 96 chinchillas and 896 dwarf Russian hamsters. We're just checking them over because none of them have water bottles. Or they have food, but some of the water bottles they do have can chewed. This is what it looked like when they went into the, um, yeah. into the boxes and this is what came out. Gone. A bit easy. As they're not catching their flight until the morning, they'll need some refreshments. I think I need about 40. The pots that they were given should have been a bit more sturdy. I am absolutely dreading this. To make matters worse, Tara is hardly a dab hand when it comes to using tools. What's a screwdriver? <laughs> um, just a bit cautious about letting them get too close to the doors in case they make a run for it, in case they make a break for freedom, because I don't think I'd stand a chance catching them. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, they're really thirsty. I've just done four, and it's taken me probably 10 or 15 minutes. At this rate, some of the rodents could be in for a long wait. Uh, but one dog definitely isn't staying the night. Hey! This illegal immigrant is being deported in luxury. Sharon is organizing a chauffeur to whisk the King Charles Spaniel to a private jet bound for Luxembourg. I just need one dog to go to Farnborough for an eight o'clock flight. Yeah, they've got an exec jet waiting for it, but they just need, we need someone to take it down there. You're gonna go home now, you're gonna go home. Go on in. They're all packed. Did you pack it yourself? You've not got any scissors in there. Any really sharp. There we go. Licking my fingers, aren't you, through the bars? OK. The flight back to Luxembourg will cost an estimated £20,000. ARC regular Matt Ford is used to transporting dangerous exotic creatures, but taking a pampered pooch to a private plane is a first. It's got his bed inside. In just three hours, the King Charles Spaniel should be back in Luxembourg and the luxury of his own home. It's breakfast time at Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre. There you go. But this morning, there's none for the ring-tailed lemurs. After two years, they're heading to a new home, and as they'll need capturing, the staff want them to be hungry. Hey, honey. Are you saying goodbye? Hey. Oh, bless. Don't see you again. That was quite sad, actually. They've been here so long. You kind of just get used to seeing them every day. Once they're gone, it'll be quite sad, but... They'll have a better life, I'm sure. Bouncing around on trees and stuff like that, so. Bye, guys. Have a nice life. 120 miles away, Delilah the spider monkey has already reached her new home, Dudley Zoo. So we've got a nice young female to actually breed with our male Gucci. Uh, we've never actually bred the spider monkeys at the zoo before, so hopefully this will be a first for us to get them, get them breeding in the very near future. In six months' time, she'll be hanging out with the rest of the troop, and it's hoped she'll find a mate amongst them. But for now, she's settling into her own private quarters. Welcome to Dudley. She'll be up here now for six months, uh, go through the quarantine period, and then we'll... Um, bring the male and uh, the other two females up to introduce them into this area. Then we'll move them back down to their, their enclosure once the introduction's gone. OK. She's very inquisitive, isn't she? She is. That's brilliant. A 
At the Ark, an unusual cargo has arrived. Two breeding rams have just flown halfway round the world from New Zealand. After 24 hours on a plane, they're keen to stretch their legs. The Ark's stable yard is the ideal place, in theory. Liz, the animal health vet, needs to get them inside a stable to check them over. But that's easier said than done. These Romney rams have been selectively bred, not only for the quality of their wool, but for their resistance to some parasites. Livestock movements are strictly regulated, and Liz the vet needs to take blood samples to ensure they're the same animals recorded on their travel documents. Okay, let's just get this bucket out before we start. <laughs> but the rams have different ideas. Sheepdog, anyone? With the rams safely back in the stable, again, Liz can carry out her work. At 600 pounds each, plus the cost of their flights from New Zealand, these are luxury livestock. With the blood samples taken, it's just a matter of getting them in the trailer. And with a little persuasion, they're ready for their trip to South Wales. We've got about four hours, depending on the traffic. <laughs> After more than two years, the time has finally come for the lemurs to leave the ark. Lemurs are inquisitive and they can sense something is going on. Let me just see where it's going to come out from that door. Matt Ford will be taking them to their new home, but first he has to catch them. No, got them. Yeah, got them. To give him a fighting chance, he's baited the cages with fresh fruit, including their favourite, grapes. Okay, right, so plan of action. Yep. Got the box in there, we've got some fruit in the box. They haven't had breakfast this morning, so we'll pull the shutters up. They'll go in there, I'll have the door. Hopefully, they'll come in to get some breakfast. And if we can try and aim for two for a box or something like that. All three if they... So, yeah, all three that they go in there. I don't want to get more than that. Yeah, of course. Right. A bit more, a bit more. I do, I do. Okay, and they'll all run away from it. The lemurs may be hungry, but they're also very wary. This could take some time. Okay, we've got one in. One. And I've got two. Two. Should I shut it? No, no, yeah. Closing the door must be timed to perfection. I've got none at the moment. Hang on. I don't want to try not to trap the babies in there on their own. OK, there's two. OK, Larry, it's those. Two down, four to go. Right. Animal health inspector Sharon is also on a mission. She's been called to inspect a three-month-old calf. But she's not heading to a farm. She's on her way into London. I'm off to see a gentleman that has a holding or a farm down near the coast somewhere and had a abandoned calf and in his wisdom decided because he had no way of looking after the calf on the farm bring it back and put it in his back garden so today we're going off to see the calf and hopefully it can move back down to the south coast now with the rest of his herd and rejoin all its friends with a living in the back garden in a terraced house in london sharon is part of a team that inspects the premises where animals are kept and checks on their welfare her work often takes her into the capital. Well, I reckon that trailer's a giveaway for where it is, don't you? But a cow in the suburbs is a first. Hello! Hi. 
Duke. Hi, I'm Sharon. <laughs> Mr Hart's nearing retirement. He's always fancied a small holding, but the reality of keeping farm animals has been a steep learning curve. Oh, look. So has the cow got a name? Ruby. Ruby. We bought her back because <gasps> Mum decided yeah. that she wasn't going to have anything to do with her. So um, she was in a very, very poorly condition. So we, we had to really do something, otherwise we were going to lose her. She's obviously with... thrived on it. Yes, she's doubled in size and she is so, so affectionate. She loves a, a little eyes roll back. <laughs> she gets really silly. She's really playing up now. The calf very nearly had to be put down, as it should have had a licence before it was moved. But Sharon was able to get her a passport and Ruby the calf has lived to tell the tale. There's no welfare concerns in the short term. Oh, no. There might be when she's full grown and she's still living on the patio. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> Trust me, she is not. Sharon can't help noticing that Mr Hart's records are not on computer. And curiously, the garden is full of poultry. To be quite true, I'm a paper person. Um, I don't like computers that much, to be quite true with you. It's actually uh, bemusing because I was there putting in what I thought was an offer for these eggs and I was actually buying them. So I ended up with um, lots and lots of eggs. But despite his lack of success with computers, his paperwork is in order. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we will speak when Ruby moves, yeah? Yes, yes, this will be great. Excellent. When he took on this small holding, I don't think it ever occurred to him how bureaucratic the paperwork side of keeping animals are, and I think a lot of people don't. You know, they have a, this lovely dream of, I'll have a few cows, sheep, pigs, etc. But actually, when it comes down to it, the paperwork side and the commitment is really very time consuming. It's round three with the lemurs. Matt has managed to catch four of them. Now there are just two to go. Right, so is you ready? Lemurs are highly social animals, and the remaining youngsters are already missing their family. You can hear them calling to each other. But they'll, be, uh, okay. they'll be together in the back of the car, so hopefully they'll settle down They'll all be able to see each other as well. Matt is depending on their hungry stomachs. At last, the smell of grapes is just too much to bear. The lemurs will be sorely missed. They've become part of the Ark's family. Well, it's, it is nice having them here, and it's nice coming and sort of interacting with them. And uh, you know, they've brought people a lot of entertainment over the last couple of years. But I'm just, I'm so pleased to see them actually go to what is going to be a first-class home. We couldn't have picked somewhere better for them if we'd wanted to. Um, and that's far overwhelming, the fact that we might miss them a bit for me at the moment. So, no, I'm, re I'm really pleased to see them go. Because they were involved in a sensitive police investigation, they're heading to a secret location in the countryside. Right, ready? Yes, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Not long from now, the youngest lemurs will be climbing trees for the very first time. The New Zealand rams made it to South Wales, where Yay! farmer Penny Chandler is hoping they'll be the patter of tiny hooves. They settled in really well. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they're doing the business. <laughs> and Ruby the calf has been very comfortable in Mr Hart's back garden. Soon, she and her friends will move to his farm in the country, leaving behind their suburban good life. <laughs>